conversation that we would have, I was, of course, going back through both of your, uh, your, your bios. And one of the things that I was struck by is the things that you have in common. And one of the things that you have in common, despite other than the fact that you've both taken jobs that you didn't have to take, hard jobs after you already done something hard, uh, other than that, is the fact that you both kind of had strayed from the lanes that people had kind of laid out for you or that was expected for you. For example, of course, um, Peggy, you came to DC in 1964 to attend George Washington University. You had a degree in political science and then you went to law school and you were a fellow at the Woodrow Wilson International Center for Scholars, the youngest <coughs> ever selected, by the way. And then you went into the arts, which is kind of, and, uh, and Diva Cole, your great grandfather, <laughs> for those who don't know, Abraham Lincoln Lewis, what could be better than that, co founded the Afro American Life Insurance Company of Jacksonville, Florida. Your parents were both in the family business, and you were expected to go into the family business, too. But you didn't. You finished high school at 15, went to Fisk, after Fisk, then to Oberlin, and then you went into anthropology. So I want to ask, I'm going to ask each of you, why, how, what made you stray from the lane? So I'll ask you first, what made you stray uh -huh. from the lane? Uh -huh. Oh, I'd love to tell this story. <laughs> I came home from Oberlin College. Big Oberlin College woman. And of course, I did what a young woman should do at that period of time in the South. I went to pay my respects. And so I went to see my grandfather. At that point, my great grandfather had gone to glory. And so I did what a young girl should do. I referred to him as sir, and I said, Papa, sir, how are you? Baby girl, when are you going to come into the family business? <laughs> I said, oh, Papa, I'm going to be an anthropologist. <laughs> he said, what? I said, oh, you know, like Margaret Mead, I'm going to go off and live in other cultures and learn what people do. And he started laughing. <laughs> this southern black man started laughing. He said, baby girl, how are you going to take care of yourself doing something like that? <laughs> I was absolutely crushed. And I remember trying to keep it together. I left that meeting with my grandfather, and I found my mom. And by this time, I just broke down. I said, you won't believe what Papa said. He laughed at me. Yeah. And my mother said, you know, you need to listen to your grandfather. <laughs> <laughs> your grandfather is asking how you, a woman, is going to take care of yourself. But if this, how do you say it? <laughs> Anthropology, Mom. <laughs> He said, if this anthropology is your passion, then you must follow it. And all those years of being at Spelman College, I know you like that, right? <laughs> and then going on to have the privilege to be at Bennett College for Women. I never forgot those words. When that young sister was in my office saying, my parents want me to be a lawyer, but I want to be a poet. Yeah. I just said, you have got to follow your passion. And so maybe it looks a little strange the way my sister friend Peggy Cooper Kafis and I have moved along our respective and intersecting journeys. They can say a whole lot of things about us, but no one will ever say that we were not true to our passions. Mm -hmm.